Hello everyone, my name is Stephanie Moran. Welcome to another edition of Bedtime Stories. I will be reading to you the story of Babar from 1933. Now this is a very old story indeed, but it's one that's quite dear to my heart because my great-grandmother very, very much loved the elephant. Elephants are very precious creatures. They're in, mostly endangered because poachers are stealing their ivory. An elephant's tusks, which has the ivory in it, are actually its teeth. So think of it as you're going to the dentist, and without any anesthetic, they're taking off this little tooth right there. I imagine it'd be very painful. They're also in danger of, poach of poaching and other natural threats like predation. So it's very important to help save these elephants. But without further ado, I want, you, I want you to sit back and relax as I read the story of Babar, written and illustrated by John de Bernhoff. In, a, in the great forest, a little elephant is born. His name is Babar. His mother loves him very much. She rocks him to sleep with her trunk while singing softly to him. Babar has grown bigger. He now plays with the other little elephants. He is a very good little elephant. See him digging in the sand with his shell. Babar is riding happily on his mother's back when a wicked hunter, hidden behind some bushes, shoots at them. The hunter has killed Babar's mother! The monkey hides. The birds fly away. Babar cries. The hunter runs up to catch poor Babar. Babar runs away because he is afraid of the hunter. After several days, very tired indeed, he comes to a town. He hardly knows what to make of it because this is the first time he has seen so many houses. So many things are new to him. The broad streets, the automobiles and houses. However, he is especially interested in two gentlemen he notices in the street. He says to himself, Really, they are very well dressed. I would like to have some fine clothes, too. I wonder how I can get them. So this is Babar and his mom right there. As you can see, they were very happy until the hunter shot at them. It's more than likely his mother got poached for her ivory, which is a unfortunately very common practice around Africa and especially in the national parks where they're trying to help avoid it. This right here is Babar surveying the little town. See all these, see all these buildings right there? I imagine it's very pretty. Luckily, a very rich old lady who has always been fond of little elephants understands right away that he is longing for a fine suit. As she likes to make people happy, she gives him her purse. Babar says to her politely, Thank you, madam. Without waste any time. Wasting any time, Babar goes into a big store. He enters the elevator. <laughs> it's such a fun it's such fun to ride up and down this funny box that he rides all the way up ten times and all the way down ten times. He did not want to stop, but the elevator boy finally said to him, This is not a toy, Mr. Elephant. You must get out and do your shopping. Look, here is the floor walker. Babar then buys himself a shirt with a collar and tie, a suit of a becoming shade of green, then a handsome derby hat, and also shoes with spats. Well satisfied with his purchases and feeling very elegant indeed, Babar now goes to the photographer to have his picture taken. And here... Down here is the photograph. Quite small. <laughs> Quite small, isn't it? Back in the olden days, cameras weren't exactly very modern. But it's always very cool to see all of these black and white photos, or even earlier photos, which had this like little beige backdrop up across them. Babar dines with his friend, the old lady. She thinks he looks very smart in his new clothes. After dinner, because he is tired, he goes to bed and falls asleep very quickly. Babar now lives at the old lady's house. In the mornings, he does setting up exercises with her, and then he takes his bath. 
He goes out for an automobile ride every day. The old lady has given him the car. She gives him whatever he wants. <laughs> just like just like many of you, huh? I was pestering your parents to give them what you want. <laughs> a learned professor gives him lessons. Babar pays attention and does well in his work. He is a good pupil and makes rapid progress. In the evening, after dinner, he tells the old lady's friends all about his great life in the great forest. So that's so that's the nice old lady. Lady right there. And that's Babar. And his, his really good new suit. Doesn't he look really handsome? I bet he does. That's him in the bathtub. <laughs> I guess that's a very big bathtub. You need a very big bathtub to help clean a big elephant. <laughs> However, Babar is not quite happy for he misses playing in the great forest with his little cousins and his friends, the monkeys. He often stands at the window, thinking sadly of his childhood, and cries when he, re he remembers his mother. Two years have passed. One day, during his walk, he sees two little elephants coming toward him. They have no clothes on. Why, he says in astonishment to the old lady, it's Arthur and Celeste, my little cousins. Babar kisses them affectionately and hurries off with them to buy them some fine clothes. He takes them to a pastry shop to eat some good cakes. Meanwhile, in the forest, the elephants are calling and hunting high and low for Arthur and Celeste, and their mothers are very worried. Fortunately, in flying all over the town, an old marabou bird has seen them and comes back quickly to tell the news. The mothers of Arthur and Celeste have come to, to the town to fetch them. They are very happy to have them back, but they scold them just the same because they ran away. Babar makes up his mind to go back with Arthur and Celeste and their mothers to see the great forest again. The old lady helps him to pack his trunk. They are all ready to start. Babar kisses the old lady goodbye. He would be quite happy to go if it were not for leaving her. He promises to come back some day. He will never forget her. They have gone. There is no room in the car for the mothers, so they run behind and lift up their trunks to avoid breathing the dust. The old lady is left alone. Sadly, she wonders, when shall I see my little Babar again? Aww. So, this is Arthur and Celeste. And that's Babar right there with the old lady. This is Arthur and Celeste with, with their clothes on. I think they look pretty cute in those clothes, don't you? I would certainly think so. Especially little Arthur. He's so cute. Look at him. Alas, that very day, the king of the elephants had eaten a bad mushroom. It poisoned him and became ill. So ill that he died. This was a great calamity. After the funeral, the three oldest elephants were holding a meeting to choose a new king. Just then, they hear a noise. Mm -hmm. burp, burp. And then they turn around. Guess what they see? Babar arriving in his car, and all the elephants running and shouting, Here they are! Here they are! Hello, Babar! Hello, Arthur! Hello, Celeste! What beautiful clothes! What a beautiful car! That's all the elephants running... <gasps> Towards the three oldest ones. See the car? I bet that looks really special. Now, ca cars used to, cars used to look like that because we haven't really thought about the environment, you know, air pollution and all that. So we made these cars basically to just look fancy in them. <laughs> Then Cornelius, the oldest of all the elephants, spoke in his quavering voice. My good friends, we are seeking a king. Why not choose Babar? He has just returned from the big city. He has learned so much among men. Let us crown him king. All the other elephants thought that Cornelius had spoken wisely, and then eagerly await Babar's reply. I want to thank you, one and all, said Babar. 
before accepting your proposal, I must explain to you that, while we were traveling in the car, Celeste and I have became engaged. If I become your king, she will be your queen. Long live Queen Celeste! Long live King Babar! cry all the elephants without a moment's hesitation. And thus it was that Babar became king. You, you have good ideas, said Babar to Cornelius. I will therefore make you a general, and when I get my crown, I will give you my hat. In a week, I shall marry Celeste. We will then have a splendid party in honor of our marriage and coronation. Then, turning to the birds, Babar asks them to go and invite all the animals to the festivities. And he tells a dromedary to go into the town and buy in some beautiful wedding clothes. The wedding guests begin to arrive. The dromedary returns with the bridal costumes just in the nick of time for the ceremony. After the wedding and the coronation, everybody dances merrily. So, this is the wedding party. That looks really fun. That's Babar in his kingly clothes. And that's Celeste, his little cousin. In a wedding dress. Now, understand that th this was back in the, in the time when you, when marrying second and third cousins wasn't considered all that taboo, but you gotta remember that Queen Elizabeth and Prince Elizabeth and Prince Philly were also third cousins, so I know it might be a little weird, but you gotta remember this was a different time. The festivities are over, night has fallen, the stars have risen in the sky. King Mabar and Queen Celeste are indeed very happy. Now the world is asleep. The guests have gone home, happy, though tired from too much dancing. They will long remember this great celebration. And now, King Babar and Queen Celeste, both eager for further adventures, set out on their honeymoon in a gorgeous yellow balloon. The yellow balloon says, Au revoir, which means goodbye in French. See the, see the elephants? They're waving, they're waving the little tissues with their trunks. An elephant's trunk is actually is actually a hand and an arm. Arm and the little knobs on the knobs on the trunk are actually fingers. Very interesting. So that was the end of the story of Babar. I want to thank you all for listening to my story. If you would like, like hit the like and subscribe button to get more stories being read to you and your children. If you if you so choose to participate with them, as well as the schedule updates on uh, any and all schedule updates that I will be announcing to the channel, if I, if I so choose. In the meantime, see you next week. Bye-bye.